In Euclidean plane geometry, Apollonius's problem is to construct circles that are tangent to three given circles in a plane. Apollonius of Perga posed and solved this famous problem in his work Pi Alpha Phi Alpha Iota. This work has been lost. But a 4th century report of his results by Pappus of Alexandria has survived. Three given circles generically have eight different circles that are tangent to them and each solution circle encloses or excludes the three given circles in a different way. In each solution, a different subset of the three circles is enclosed and there are eight subsets of a set whose cardinality is 3, since 8 equals 23. In the 16th century, Adrian van Roemen solved the problem using intersecting hyperbolas. But this solution does not use only straight edge and compass constructions. Francois Vieter found such a solution by exploiting limiting cases. Any of the three given circles can be shrunk to zero radius or expanded to infinite radius. Vieter's approach, which uses simpler limiting cases to solve more complicated ones, is considered a plausible reconstruction of Apollonius O method. The method of Van Rumen was simplified by Isaac Newton, who showed that Apollonius' a problem is equivalent to finding a position from the differences of its distances to three known points. This has applications in navigation and positioning systems such as LORAN. Later mathematicians introduced algebraic methods, which transform a geometric problem into algebraic equations. These methods were simplified by exploiting symmetries inherent in the problem of Apollonius. For instance, solution circles generically occur in pairs, with one solution enclosing the given circles that the other excludes. Joseph Diaz Gergon used this symmetry to provide an elegant straight edge and compass solution, while other mathematicians used geometrical transformations such as reflection in a circle to simplify the configuration of the given circles. These developments provide a geometrical setting for algebraic methods and a classification of solutions according to 33 essentially different configurations of the given circles. Apollonius' problem has stimulated much further work. Generalizations to three dimensions, constructing a sphere tangent to four given spheres, and beyond have been studied. The configuration of three mutually tangent circles has received particular attention. René Descartes gave a formula relating the radii of the solution circles and the given circles, now known as Descartes' theorem. Solving Apollonius a problem iteratively in this case leads to the Apollonian gasket, which is one of the earliest fractals to be described in print and is important in number theory via Ford circles and the hardy little word circle method. Statement of the problem The general statement of Apollonius a problem is to construct one or more circles that are tangent to three given objects in a plane, where an object may be a line, a point or a circle of any size. These objects may be arranged in any way and may cross one another, however, they are usually taken to be distinct meaning that they do not coincide. Solutions to Apollonius a problem are sometimes called Apollonius circles, although the term is also used for other types of circles associated with Apollonius. The property of tangency is defined as follows. First, a point, line or circle is assumed to be tangent to itself, hence, if a given circle is already tangent to the other two given objects, it is counted as a solution to Apollonius a problem. Two distinct geometrical objects are said to intersect if they have a point in common. By definition, a point is tangent to a circle or a line if it intersects them, that is, if it lies on them. Thus, two distinct points cannot be tangent. If the angle between lines or circles at an intersection point is zero, they are said to be tangent. The intersection point is called a tangent point or a point of tangency. In practice, two distinct circles are tangent if they intersect at only one point. If they intersect at zero or two points, they are not tangent. The same holds true for a line and a circle. Two distinct lines cannot be tangent in the plane, although two parallel lines can be considered as tangent at a point at infinity in inverse of geometry. 
The solution circle may be either internally or externally tangent to each of the given circles. An external tangency is one where the two circles bend away from each other at their point of contact, they lie on opposite sides of the tangent line, at that point, and they exclude one another. The distance between their centers equals the sum of their radii. By contrast, an internal tangency is one in which the two circles curve in the same way at their point of contact, the two circles lie on the same side of the tangent line, and one circle encloses the other. In this case, the distance between their centers equals the difference of their radii. As an illustration, in figure 1, the pink solution circle is internally tangent to the medium size given black circle on the right whereas it is externally tangent to the smallest and largest given circles on the left. Apollonius a problem can also be formulated as the problem of locating one or more points such that the differences of its distances to three given points equal three known values. Consider a solution circle of radius Rs and three given circles of radii R1, R2 and R3. If the solution circle is externally tangent to all three given circles, the distances between the center of the solution circle and the centers of the given circles equal D1 equals R1 plus Rs, D2 equals R2 plus Rs and D3 equals R3 plus Rs, respectively. Therefore, differences in these distances are constants, such as d1 minus d2 equals r1 minus r2. They depend only on the known radii of the given circles and not on the radius rs of the solution circle, which cancels out. This second formulation of Apollonius a problem can be generalized to internally tangent solution circles by changing the corresponding differences of distances to sums of distances, so that the solution circle radius Rs again cancels out. The reformulation in terms of center-center distances is useful in the solutions below of Adrian van Rummen and Isaac Newton, and also in hyperbolic positioning or trilateration, which is the task of locating a position from differences in distances to three known points. For example, navigation systems such as LORAN identify a receiver's position from the differences in arrival times of signals from three fixed positions, which correspond to the differences in distances to those transmitters. History A rich repertoire of geometrical and algebraic methods have been developed to solve Apollonius a problem, which has been called the most famous of all geometry problems. The original approach of Apollonius of Perga has been lost, but reconstructions have been offered by François Vieter and others. Based on the clues in the description by Pappus, the first new solution method was published in 1596 by Adrian van Rummen, who identified the centers of the solution circles as the intersection points of two hyperbolas. Van Rummen's method was refined in 1687 by Isaac Newton in his Principia, and by John Casey in 1881. Although successful in solving Apollonius a problem, Van Rummen's method has a drawback. A prized property in classical Euclidean geometry is the ability to solve problems using only a compass and a straight edge. Many constructions are impossible using only these tools, such as dividing an angle in three equal parts. However, many such impossible problems can be solved by intersecting curves such as hyperbolas, ellipses and parabolas. For example, doubling the cube cannot be done using only a straight edge and compass. But many TMUs showed that the problem can be solved by using the intersections of two parabolas. Therefore, Van Rummen's solution, which uses the intersection of two hyperbolas, did not determine if the problem satisfied the straight edge and compass property. Van Rummen's friend François Vieter, who had urged Van Rummen to work on Apollonius a problem in the first place, developed a method that used only compass and straight edge. Prior to Viet's solution, Regimontanus doubted whether Apollonius a problem could be solved by straight edge and compass. 
Veer to first solve some simple special cases of Apollonius a problem, such as finding a circle that passes through three given points which has only one solution if the points are distinct. He then built up to solving more complicated special cases, in some cases by shrinking or swelling the given circles. According to the 4th century report of Papis of Alexandria, Apollonius' own book on this problem, entitled Pi Alpha Phi Alpha Iota, followed a similar progressive approach. Hence, Witt's solution is considered to be a plausible reconstruction of Apollonius' solution. Although other reconstructions have been published independently by three different authors, Several other geometrical solutions to Apollonius' a problem were developed in the 19th century. The most notable solutions are those of Jean-Victor Poncelet and of Joseph Diaz Gurgon, whereas Poncelet's proof relies on homothetic centers of circles and the power of a point theorem. Gurgon's method exploits the conjugate relation between lines and their poles in a circle. Methods using circle inversion were pioneered by Julius Peterson in 1879. One example is the annular solution method of H. S. M. Coxeter. Another approach uses Lysphere geometry, which was developed by Sophus Lie. Algebraic solutions to Apollonius a problem were pioneered in the 17th century by René Descartes and Prince. Princess Elizabeth of Bohemia, although their solutions were rather complex. Practical algebraic methods were developed in the late 18th and 19th centuries by several mathematicians, including Leonhard Euler, Nicholas Fuss, Carl Friedrich Gauss, Lazarus Carnot, and Augustin Louis Corchy.